as photographers, as content creators, whether you're full-time or part-time, you're most likely leaving money on the table because you're not charging for certain things because you feel weird charging for them or you don't know that you can charge for them. So today I'm here to talk about some of the things that I charge for. I'm fresh off of a commercial shoot in Saigon and for a Fortune 500 American company and all the things I talked about today I charge for. So I thought I would share these things with you guys to help you guys get more money and build a sustainable business. So let's get into it and let's talk photography. <music> All right, let's get into the first thing that people don't charge for and it drives me nuts. And even some clients are a little bit weary about it, but if you really just think about it logically, it makes sense. Charging for travel days and scouting days. I mean, this is kind of essential to what I'm talking about today. You're charging for your time. So we always charge for all of our jobs, editorial jobs, commercial jobs, video jobs, content creation jobs, charge for travel days. So if I'm flying down to Saigon, for example, that's a full day of traveling. It might only be a two hour flight, but that day, I can't take on any other work. I can't take on another assignment. I block off that day. Not charging the same as a shooting day, but I'm still charging for that day because I'm traveling down there one day and I'm traveling back another day. Those are two full days of my time. I'd rather not be at airports. I'd rather not be sitting in taxis and checking into hotels. I'd rather be at home with my dogs, hanging out. So I charge for those days. Now, I don't charge a full price for those days. It's not the same amount as I would for a shooting day, but I find typically what works for me, I charge about a third of what I would for normal shooting days. And then in addition to that, if you can't scout on the same day, if it's that long of a travel and you need a scouting day, you charge for that as well, and I charge for about the same amount for that. And so when a client tells you, oh, it's just a one day shoot, it's not really. It's a travel day on the way there, it might be a scouting day the next day, and then your shooting day, and then a scouting day, and then a travel day on the back end, and then one or two days of post-production, and then probably a couple meetings before and after online, really like at a minimum it turns into at least a full work week so it's not just a one day shoot it's a lot more than that so charge for that again because that is your time and time is money so the next important thing to charge for and to agree upon this is going to save you a lot of headaches and it's also potentially going to make you a lot of money is agreeing to usage terms so if you're creating content for a business video or photography what are the agreed upon usage terms you know is it just one year for social media Okay, that's one price. Or is it in perpetuity, meaning they can use it forever and on billboards and in global ad campaigns and on television? That's a whole different price point. So we're talking a difference of tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on the shoot. So all that stuff needs to be agreed upon ahead of time and all that needs to be included in your price. So you need to talk about how your content's gonna be used where it's gonna be used and how long it's gonna be used for, and then build your quote out accordingly. If you're doing your first couple of shoots for free or for trade, still agree upon the terms because you don't want that situation later on. You did this really cheap shoot for a giant Fortune 500 company or you did it for barter at a hotel, and then all of a sudden someone regionally or globally in the marketing department saw those images or saw that video that you created and like, wow, this is great, can we use it? Yeah, he said we can use it however we want. Then they start using it globally and you got nothing for it. You got like a free meal and a couple nights at the hotel. Not worth it. You're going to feel used. And again, these are billion dollar companies. So even if, even if you're doing this on the cheap, even if you're doing your first few shoots for barter, agree upon the terms. And if it is for free or if it is for barter or if it is on the cheap, then give them usage on the cheap. Give them one year. Give them just social. You're creating content that they're using globally to generate millions of dollars for their company you should be compensated for it. But you won't be if you didn't agree upon the terms ahead of time. Hey guys, if you're enjoying this content, just a quick little note, remember to like and subscribe. And if you really like, like me, consider becoming a member for $4.99 a month. It's the equivalent of taking me out for like an American cup of coffee once a month. If you find that worth it, cool. If not, I get it, I understand. Anyway, back to the episode. The next thing you should be charging for is your team members. So if you're going on a shoot that requires a producer and an assistant or a Digitech, someone that's gonna be handling your files and tethering your shoot and sending the files to the client remotely somewhere else, you need to charge for that. You need to bill for that. Oftentimes when we work with marketing departments, they say like, oh, you know, so-and-so in marketing can produce the shoot. Can they? Have they really done a full production of a shoot? They understand timelines, do they understand props, they understand how long it takes for wardrobe and allowing time in between, allowing rest time, if the models have agreed upon a certain amount of working hours per day, 
Probably not. That's its own job. Producer is essential to the shoot, so charge for that. And then also, you're gonna be billing in their time for travel, their time for scouting days. So make sure you charge for your entire team. You don't need to overdo it. If your team doesn't require a lighting assistant, then you don't need to have one. Maybe it just requires one assistant. And don't allow them to step in and cross these items off because they say, oh, so-and-so can do it. Because you don't want someone producing a shoot that doesn't know what they're doing. That could ruin the entire shoot. Or they might even, I've had people recommend like, oh, so-and-so can help you with your bag and lighting. Like, Really? Do they know lighting? They know how to handle my cameras? Have a conversation about this stuff. Just explain it. Most people are rational when you explain things to them in a rational way. The next thing you can charge for that you probably don't is to rent your own gear. So oftentimes when I go on a shoot, there's a line item for gear. And that might be a couple hundred bucks a day, but you're putting wear and tear on your gear, putting your gear at risk to being broken. Of course, you should have insurance as well, but that insurance costs money, so you can charge for gear. That's a common line item on a lot of productions. Charge for the gear, and especially if you're gonna need more excessive gear. Like if I'm doing a wildlife shoot and I need to rent a longer lens that I don't have, I can charge for that. If I need lighting equipment that I don't normally have, or big production with really heavy, really expensive outdoor lighting, charge for that. Again, don't think about this stuff afterwards. You have to think about it ahead of time. So the next thing, which seems common, but people ask me all the time when I go on shoots, even like, like low budget editorial shoots, like, do they pay for your airfare? Do they pay for your food? Do they pay for your lodging? Yes, you should always charge for airfare, lodging, and transportation. I mean, you have to eat three meals a day. You have to get to where you're going. Why would you pay for that? They should pay for that. Oh, oh and another quick little bonus tip is charge for hard drives. That's important. Oftentimes, a client's going to want you to mail them a hard drive, or you need to keep hard drives on location for the shoot. You need to back up their files, so charge for that. That's part of the shoot. That's part of what they're paying for. You need this equipment for them specifically for the shoot. Charge for it. The last thing you should be charging for today is post-production. Not just charging, but agreeing upon the terms ahead of time. This is so important, both for photography and for video production. So for photography, if you're just doing basic color correction, that might be a smaller fee. If Again, even if it's something basic as just sending the raw files, you should be charging for that as well, because it's still gonna be a bunch of work. You're probably still gonna have to rename the files their way, upload the images to their server, deal with a little bit of back and forth there, and then charging more if it's gonna be more work than that. So for our hotel shoots, it's a lot more post-production on certain things. Might We do a lot of pre-opening shoots, so this construction there might have to take some things out, remove some scaffolding. So we charge per image. So it's gonna be a certain amount per image. We might have a shoot where it's just basic color correction, so you have to communicate ahead of time on what's to be expected afterwards. And the same goes for video as well. Like typically we do it per round, but we're agreeing upon like, hey, we're not removing things from this video. So you're talking about picking out the music and then the editor's time, putting that music in so the client can, re so the client can preview it. And then all of a sudden people weighing in and want to move things around. Edits are a lot of work. And then every time they change something, it's a lot more work. And every time you have to export it, it's a lot more work and a lot more time. You have to agree upon this stuff. And then of course you can have some leeway within reason. But I find if we limit it to like, let's say three rounds of edits, and we tell them after that edit in the contract, after that edit, it's gonna cost this amount per edit. And then all of a sudden they talk to their boss ahead of time and don't wait till after the third review to all of a sudden say, oh, our boss has all different notes and all of a sudden we wanna change things. Fine, if you're gonna charge for it, but it's amazing how much people value your time when you put a price on it. It's like a buffet, think yourself at a buffet. If, you, if it's unlimited food, you tend to overeat. So if you don't put limitations on it and you don't charge for things outside of what you agreed upon, then they're gonna take advantage of it. Just human nature, they can't resist themselves. So that's it for today, guys. Remember, all the things I mentioned today, I'm not saying these things like putting these items in and being nasty about it when people don't wanna pay for it. I'm nice, I'm rational, and I explain things. And oftentimes when I explain things, like I said earlier, in a rational way, people are very rational. So sometimes in certain regions, like Vietnam, for example, it's a lot harder to charge for usage. But we stood the course. We spent time doing this while our, while our competitors weren't. And oftentimes you can say, well, that's gonna lose you business. No, it hasn't. And, and I can honestly say with a lot of our competition, we make more on one shoot than they do probably on five shoots. So it's been completely worth it for us. And we're busy. So all the things I'm talking about today, it's not BS. I actually do these things. I actually charge for these things and people actually pay me for these things. It's gonna be hard and some clients aren't gonna accept this in the beginning and that's fine. But stay the course, put the time in, have the quality of work to justify these things and you can charge for them. That's all for today, guys. Hope you guys learned anything. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comments section. I'm quite active in there. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to check out my online store at justinmott.com. I've got one-on-one -on -one classes, a lot of business one-on-one -on -one classes as well. You can check all that out at justinmott.com and don't forget to have a wonderful day.